Hi, everybody. Welcome back to The Outlaw Feminist. I'm super glad you guys are here. I hit 1,000 subscribers this week, and that's all because of you guys. The positive feedback that I am getting about my mission to stop sex trafficking in Oregon is truly inspiring, and it makes me feel like I'm not freaking alone for once. Um, my comment section is super safe and I appreciate that as well. Um, I have some groovy news. I'm going to be on Insane Throttle Biker News tomorrow, this Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Central Time, and 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Hollywood and I are going to discuss my life as a legendary Portland stripper, my experiences with a lot of the outlaw biker lifestyle, Team Blue, and everything that we did to hustle for those that can't hustle for themselves right now, and then my mission to stop sex trafficking in Oregon. Check out my description for more information about Insane Throttle and Hollywood. No matter what, this dude was the first man to step up and say, hey, I want to help you get the word out there and to promote your station and to help you with your mission. So for that, I will forever be indebted to that dude. So like, subscribe, and share his channel because that dude did what's right by women. Let's get the truth out there and save some lives. In other news... I've added a new segment to my channel called Girls Team First. I think women and men alike are really going to get a kick out of this. So grab some smoke, grab something to drink, and let's dig into episode four of My Life with Outlaw Bikers, Miss January, Mongols Calendar Girl. We'll be back. <laughs> Here we go again. Chick noises, you know you love them. In the last episode, Clean and Dirty of My Life with Outlaw Bikers, I talked about the Mongols in MySpace. I finally met the Mongols, and boy, can I drag a story out. In this episode of Miss January, Mongols Calendar Girl, you will learn about the first work that I ever did uh, for the Mongols, and the first time I ever did the dumb stuff. But before we start, let's talk about some something real quick. I need to explain my theatrics about grimy. I feel like I might have touched on disrespectful, and I need to watch that stuff. I'm going to leave it there, though, because I'm going to stay true, true to who I am and not some bastardized version of me. One of my customers, excuse me. I was wrong, probably, and I won't do it again moving on. I am interested in the truth, accountability, and growth, especially for me. With that said, there have been a few in the past, some of them very powerful, that put me in danger to shut me up. And they chased me, they threatened me, and they stalked me, and they labeled me a rat. Not cool. As my story proceeds, I'm going to address these guys. But I will be more tactful, and I won't clap at them in the same manner that I have at Grimy. I'm not going to do that again. Um, I'm not mad anymore. The right thing happened. I wasn't a cop caller and it was taken care of, so I just want you to know I'm not going to attack anybody. It's my intention to keep my platform safe for everybody except sex traffickers and people that dig them. So to all you sex traffickers, sex tourists, and bottom bitches, and the protective government agencies like the OLCC, Portland Police Bureau, and the DPSST, I'm coming after you. And I'm going to be so extra. But I will do better about dialing down the bitch in the future for everybody else and keep co uh, keep focused on my mission. So back at it. 
that Mongol guy on MySpace, that's what I used to call him. He had mentioned that he wanted to do a Mongol calendar to raise money for the Oregon chapter or chapters. I can't really remember how many there were at that time, kind of vacillated back and forth. He sent me images of a couple of girls sprawled out awkwardly across motorcycles. They were super cute ladies, but I've seen biker calendars before and I didn't think that would sell. I offered an image to help him. I had just gotten done with filming I Am Virgin, a little Skinamax flick starring Ron Jeremy. Check it out. It is effing terrible, but you get to see my boobs, so that's cool. So I got in touch with the set photographer, Nicole Cook, to schedule a photo shoot. But first, I needed support gear. That Mongol on MySpace sent, said that his brother would be at the Acropolis on Friday and I could pick up a t-shirt from them there. Since I didn't work that Friday, I got myself all dressed up in my red and white vans and my California Angels uh, flat bill with red and white graphics. I walked through the Acropolis store and asked Tony, hey, where are those biker guys? He pointed around the corner. I saw them back by the payphone, all huddled up in a dark corner by stage three. I marched over, shoved my head into the group and announced, hey, I'm here for the t-shirt. Remember, this was my strip club. I ran this place every Thursday and Saturday night. But the group's reaction was not awesome. I felt like the music stopped too. I feel like I just asked the entire group to take a bite of a shit sandwich. I realized that I better keep saying words. Hey, I'm blue. I was sent to pick up a t-shirt from you and I looked right at the twin. The twin's light bulb just all of a sudden went off and jumped up and said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the car. Come on, let's go. Yikes. <laughs> He and I walked to the car. He was excited for the calendar. He spoke about being a member of the Mongols. He was now in the biggest, baddest, best motorcycle club in the world, in the whole wide world. That's not verbatim, but it's close. I'm positive that he said baddest, though. Those may not have been his exact words, but it was his exact tone. Honestly, it was pure. He had joy in his heart, and it really made me smile. I grabbed the t-shirt, and he, invite, he invited me to join his group back at the Acropolis. We walked back into the club, and I see a buddy of mine from downtown, the downtown scene. It was an ex-FSU member. We started chatting, and I started putting two and two together. That MySpace Mongol guy knows a lot of guys. Then walked in the Gypsy Jokers. You could have heard a pin drop. Okay, remember how I said that dudes kind of bitched down to the Mongols and bitched down to the Gypsy Jokers? Now we had two of those groups in the house. There was no bitching down and the scene was intense. Joker Josh finally managed to make his way over to me to say hello. And I think that irritated Big Joe from Dago. He started screaming at me about my red and white gear. Don't you know this is war? I clapped back. This is a titty bar. Relax. The two clubs were interacting, but I like tigers circling one another. I talk tough. But I don't want to get myself involved in dude drama. I'm a chick and I cannot take a punch. So weird when the vibe in a strip club is exactly opposite of what it should be. You guys need to take that stuff somewhere else, by the way. I went home and proceeded to demolish my support tea, as one does. A side note, I am known for my cute alterations to support gear. So now that I have destroyed a perfectly good te textile, I was ready for the photo shoot. Shoot, I don't have access to a bike. I certainly couldn't use my dad's. I knew bikers, but I wasn't a biker chick. 
So Nicole and I did strippery ones. We knocked out about 30 to 40 shots. They were amazing. I sent the five best to the MySpace Mongol dude. The image that was chosen surprised me. It was the best shoot. It was the best shot, but it was an innocent version of me in my Metal Militia 5250 flat bill. I love that Metal Militia hat. Fucking dudes. Almost immediately, the Mongol lo- patch logo was slapped on the lower right hand corner of my photo. And that photo soon began making its way around the Mongol nation. Side note, at the time, I was not allowed to post that photo with the logo myself. Friend requests started coming in from all over the United States and the world. One of the first friend requests I got was from Oklahoma or Tulsa Jeff 1%er. Rest in peace, Papa. My Papa, Oklahoma Jeff 1%er or Tulsa Jeff 1%er, is by far the most gangsterous 1%er that ever lived. We will talk about him, though, in length at at some point at a different time. I love him and miss him so much. Rest in peace, Papa. Suddenly, I wasn't bored at work anymore. I had admirers and new friends. Such a huge ego boost. This was about the time that my first Mongol went on his own journey. In a way, I was passed off to the Mongol nation. I realized that he was a people collector. He's that guy that's always got a guy. And he shared that gift with his beloved motorcycle club. And with the Mongols, once you're in, you're in. Kind of like the Greeks. And I was in. It was decided that I would accompany the Oregon chapter or chapters, apologies, I cannot remember how many there were at the time, to help promote the calendar. I paid for myself, but the, but it was insisted that I go with them and I was accompanied by them the entire way. We would all fly down together. All of us decked out in Mongol gear, black and white from head to toe. We looked like goddamn movie stars. Nobody acted scared, though, just a bit in awe. Members of Old South Bay picked us up from the airport. That was Rambler One Percenter's last chapter. Rest in peace, Fernando. I have nothing but love for that dude. And I have some, I have a super sweet story to tell about him in a, in a later episode. Members of the old South Bay chapter picked us up at the airport. One of the members opened up the back door for me. And I noticed that there's a folded lump of black leather with black and white patches. As I go to reach down to pick it up and move it out of my way, I feel a hand gently touch my wrist. Sure, I'll take care of that. You can't touch that. I got it. I was kind of embarrassed, and I don't really know why, but he picked up the leather mass with one hand, and he grabbed a Glock and a Bowie knife that were tucked underneath with the other. I understood. I understood that I didn't understand, and I didn't understand a lot. I was instantly a fish out of water. Mm, You're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. I asked that we stop by a cigar stand so I could buy everybody a cigar. Macanudos all around. I'm a big gift giver. It's the easiest way to show that you're invested in the relationship and that you care about your part in it. I'm all about go and just a little about show. We finally made our way after bar hopping to the, I think it's the 40th Dago anniversary party. You'll have to check my facts on that. It's 40, it's 40 or 45. I'm not sure. But the presidents of that, the president of that chapter's Son was stabbed in the arm by H.A. Hells Angel supporters or something like that. So it was an intense, 
It was a really intense party right from the get-go. The Oregon guys and I sat with Big Repo and Country. I think the plan for us was also to stay in their room that night. I know that I found that our accommodations were going to be a little rougher than I was used to. Like we would be sleeping on the floor and stuff. I sat next to Big Repo and he was very interesting to talk to. He was weirdly calm, not flirty at all. Country, he was a chatterbox and he could not shut up and he would talk across Repo constantly. His date for the party was a young, chubby, little mousy girl, but she was all about the party. She was a sweet kid. They asked me if I was interested in having fun with them later that night. And I told them that I was super um, honored about the invitation, but I would have to pass because I was, of course, I had things to do. I was working that night. During the party, I took turns dancing with Country and J-Rock from Vegas. The Oregon members disappeared a lot. I think they were having meetings. I'm not really sure. But I like dancing with J-Rock. He was super hot. Some of those dudes in the Mongols, whew, Lord have mercy, I'm not going to lie. But Country and Maniac continued to monopolize my time. When I was left at the table alone, I got to listen to Zilla's old lady and her friend talk wild shit about me. Like I wasn't even there. Super fun. Stay calm, bitch. Stay calm. So when the party started winding down and I have danced all my dances and listened to all the bitches talk shit about me, we were all kind of pushed outside the American Legion Hall and I sat on a on Herbie's lap on a bench waiting for the Oregon guys to come back and, and collect me. As a woman, waiting for these guys to have private conversations is, well, it's a whole thing. You learn to figure out how to entertain yourself while standing in a hallway of your own hotel room that you paid for. Not often, but it happens a lot. Finally, we got a bat ride back to the motel. We arrived at the motel property and it was swarming with black and white, full patch holders, hangarounds, prospects, and all the family. It was a sight to behold, and it always is. It's one of my favorite sights to see an entire facility taken over by the black and white. It was still pretty early in the evening, though, maybe 6.30 or 7. I would find myself sitting on the edge of the bed in our room. I was talking to Repo, who was reclining on the other bed. I did a quick assessment and realized that I'd be sleeping on the floor of this freaking room. Ew. Hopefully that party would just go all night and I wouldn't have to lay down on the floor. Fingers crossed. After about 30 minutes, Zilla's old lady and country's girl popped into the room and began to disrobe and jump into the bed that I was sitting on. My eyes flew open. One of the Oregon members looked over at Grimy and said, Hey, Chris, take Blue out of here. She's not here for this. Grimy took me out of the room. For sure, I didn't want to be in there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That looked kind of hard, and I'm, I'm a lazy bitch. I'm not going to lie. So I walked around for a while, and I talked to some people, and then I started getting hungry. I found Grimy up on the balcony by the room. Hey, dude, can I grab my coat? I'm freezing. And I think it has my wallet in there. He said, I'd have to wait. I said, what's going on? He said, wing party. I was like, what the fuck? I've been standing out here with no, I'm starving and they're having snacks. I was not happy. Grimy walked me over to the room and opened up the door. Instantly, I wasn't hungry anymore. Grimy thought this was the funniest thing that he had ever ever experienced, but I knew I wasn't going to get my coat right away. Eventually my coat came out to me, but I couldn't find my wallet. Oh my goodness. I can't find my wallet. 
I can't order food. And if my wallet's not here, where is it? I sent Grimy back to that wing party room a couple of times and he couldn't find it either. It was upsetting. A prospect was assigned to help me locate my wallet that never got located. I got on my phone and I texted that MySpace Mongol dude who was not at the party. I think those bitches stole my shit. He was real clear to let me know that I better not say that out loud and that would not happen. And I couldn't believe that he didn't believe me, but I knew I needed to shut up. He wanted that squash quick. I rolled my eyes thinking, well, you don't know bitches, but I do. And I knew they stole it. They didn't. The prospect helped me look for hours. Later, I sent him a thank you card and a gift certificate for a restaurant near where he lives. I try really hard not to be upside down to people and always repay the debt that I incur. <sighs> Finally, the wing party was over. I had spent five hours trying to entertain and politely dismiss super sweet offers to go back to hotel rooms or excuse me, motel rooms with, with the black and white. But now we had to have a room and our room was covered with, let's say, wing sauce. I don't know what else to say. One of the Oregon brothers paid for our hotel room. Grimy did a belly flop right in the middle of one of the beds. Me and the other dude just looked at each other. Well, looks like we're sharing a bed, but he had a girlfriend. So I left my jeans on and I left my belt on and my cowboy boots had one foot on the floor because I wanted to make sure nothing could be misconstrued in the next morning. Of course, I'm somebody's mom. You got to be careful. He and I laid in bed and we talked about his crazy girlfriend. I reiterated that I could handle myself and you guys go home. I told him, look, I'll just have one of my customers send me a plane ticket. It's no big deal. I'm going to get this taken care of. You guys go ahead and go home. They had jobs and stuff like that. But even before Grimy had passed out on the bed, everybody at Oregon was really clear that I was not going to be left behind. We came together. We're going to leave together. Anyway, I set my alarm for 7 a.m., the time that the American Legion was supposed to be open. Ha <laughs> ha, they found my wallet. Praise the Lord. I had my bag all packed and I passed country in repose room. Maniac and country were drinking out on the balcony. Country called me over and said, hey, it was really nice to meet you, but I'm afraid you don't have any respect for me after last night. And I said, oh, baby, I never had any respect for you. We giggled and I walked away. Repo and I shook hands and Repo said, I hope to get to talk to you again someday. Later on Facebook, he would tell me you should write a book that I'm a really good writer. I have a really good story, so... That's kind of a compliment coming from that guy. I made my way through my first Mongol event alive and unwinged. Eventually, my image would be the second hit on the Google search right next to that famous Mongol head. So thank you so much for listening to this story. And it was kind of choppy. I've had some serious technical difficulties, but that happens. Now it's time for Girls Team First. Yay! My new favorite segment of my show. I hope it's clear that I'm loyal to my kind and women are my kind. I'm doing this because I have noticed that women are horrible to each other out there and I am not a fan. So every time I see a woman that supports another woman just because I'm going to make a point to highlight her and make sure that she gets seen for being awesome, being on my team and the girls team and the right team. So this is the girly part. So this woman went out of her way in front of a bunch of dudes to let me know that I was welcome with her and I was welcome with her friends. This is what she says. I first saw you in a few chats on some of the YouTube channels that I follow. These are prison genre channels. The first thing I noticed, you are a woman. There are very few women that watch this genre. 
Second, I noticed your personality and how you came in giving and earning respect from not only me, but from others. I love the way you keep it real and you are outspoken and willing to go the extra mile to help those with less. You are intelligent and you stand for what is fair and what is right. You have my full support. Let's talk about this lady right now. (laughs) Introducing Brenda Love, a Chicana coming from California. She was born and raised there. She's bilingual and a full-time sociology student. She's a proud dog mom of two Shih Tzus. And she is lovely, a character on YouTube's Travisos. Make sure and follow that channel. I have it listed also in my description. I want to really make sure and support anything that she supports. Brenda Lovely loves music and traveling. And like all good outlaw feminists, she loves shopping, makeup, guns, and baby, she loves red roses. She's passionate about helping others, and she has beasted her way through many, many hard conditions that have been put in her path and come out powerful on the other side. She loves to meet and inter- interact with new and interesting people, and she focuses on the positive forward movement in her life and her, the people around her. Her favorite place to be is the beach, and she absolutely loves sunsets. And remember, guys, she loves flowers, and she loves going out to dinner. And as we both like to say, much love and respect. For all you guys that are supporting us women, and for all you women that are supporting other women and not knocking them down, my team. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Don't forget to check out Insane Throttle and my interview with Hollywood. We're going to get down and get dirty. It's going to get wild. I promise you, it'll get wild. Throw some love to that guy. He showed some love to somebody that's fighting sex trafficking, and nobody can hate that. Nobody gets to. So next week's episode on My Life with Outlaw Bikers here on The Outlaw Feminist is Gangsters and Strippers. Until then, be safe. And baby, be dangerous. Next week, let's do this.